Greetings, young warriors. Let the interview begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the For Love and Nerds podcast. I'm here with James McKenzie, best known for Raven and Molly and Mac. Hi, James. Thanks for being here. Hello. So first off, I want to start off by asking how and why you got into acting. Um, I'm trying to think of the short version of the story. Uh, my father is an actor. And uh, so I grew up um, with, uh, surrounded by it, really. Um, so it, I suppose it was kind of inevitable that that would be my path. I mean, I think for a while I did want to be either a JCB driver or a rally driver, but um, those career paths didn't quite open up to me. <laughs> so uh, yes, I, I, I grew up with it. Um, and so I knew the ins and outs of it. I knew the good times, the bad times. Um, and I then I started going to youth theatre when I was younger. And then uh, I kind of developed my love and kind of passion for it then. And, and then I, in my kind of mid-teens, started getting some kind of professional work as an actor. And then before I knew it, I was working professionally as an actor. And then... I, uh, I got into drama school and yeah. The rest is history. <laughs> yes, I suppose the rest is history. Yeah. Awesome. And obviously, as I said just before the interview, that I best know you for as Raven from the mm. hit CBC show Raven. Uh, so, how did you plan that role? Um, I was very lucky enough to uh, be represented by a, a, an acting agent uh, before I went to drama school. Like I say, I was working professionally before I went to drama school. And so this agent continued to represent me during drama school. And um, it was towards the end of third year at drama school, I got a phone call from my agent saying that the BBC in Glasgow were auditioning for a new kids television show. Um, and they wanted to see male Scottish actors okay. with, dark, with dark hair. <laughs> That's okay. essentially it. Um, they didn't know at the time what they wanted, so they were seeing, and they didn't know how old and, and really what they wanted for, uh, in regards to, to the actor to play the part. So yeah. they were seeing people from 18 up to kind of, you know, mid to late 40s. So oh, wow. um, I, I went along and a, a few a few auditions later, I, I, I ended up with a job, which was pretty oh, amazing. Wow. So how old were you when you first took the job on? Uh, let me think, 2002. So uh, that is nearly, oh, I must have been 21, 22 when I got the job. You were 21 on Raywood. <laughs> oh, 22. wow. Have I done the wrong, have I done the wrong maths here? Hang on, let's, let's think, because I am notoriously rubbish at maths. You're 2002, 2002 is 19 years ago. Is that right? Yes. 19 years yeah. ago, right? So 19 from 42 is 21, isn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't realize how young you were on the show. I think, te I think technically, if I'm thinking about it, when we started filming, we started filming in the June of 2002. Uh, and by that time, I was 22. Yes, so I was 22 years old. Wow. I'm 23 and you looked a lot older than me in that show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so what was it like, the experience? Obviously, because it's not your normal type of show, obviously, so. Yeah, no, it was it was amazing. I mean, I suppose because they, they didn't, uh, they, you know, the, the show evolved as the years went on. So like in the, in the very first series, they had some, some, some very definite ideas. Um, but uh, so, you know, it, it did have a kind of medieval and, and the kind of mythical vibe to it. Yeah. Um, as 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 thing, you know, it, it changed the, the look and the feel of the show changed quite dramatically between series one and series two because we were lucky enough and it was it had gone quite well with series one and so that it was recommissioned and so the producers and were were able to kind of learn from their mistakes or 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 or, or kind of take it on to the next level that they wanted yeah. and you know so like my look changed dramatically and you know in the first series I kind of just had stubble and and then. Um, and, and a, kind of, a, a kind of basic kind of medieval type costume. But then suddenly in series two, I was there with a, with a, a very pronounced beard and, and a big <laughs> feathery cloak. And, and so, yeah, but it was, oh, it was an amazing experience. I mean, you know, up until then I, I had done bits and bobs in television and, and you know, like um, Inspector Rebus or I, I'd done um, a couple of Taggarts. Um, 
but so I'd had a, a little bit of experience in front of the camera, but suddenly being thrust in front of the camera and it pretty much just being me. I mean, that yeah, was the I'll only put, yeah. and, then, and then it was, and then it was the young warriors, you know? And so it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing learning experience, uh, you know, to learn technically about, about how to film something, but also just to, how to relax and be in front of a camera and, and, and also to, to, to figure out, like I say, technically about, about how it works and, and what, you know, what different people do and what their different yeah. roles are and how it works and learning the techniques and the, and the, and the jargon and all that kind of stuff. So it was an amazing, amazing learning curve. Yeah. Really. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And this is a bit of, I'm going to go like forward and then backwards just with a question. So uh, mm-hmm. obviously Raven came back three years ago now, was it three years ago? Yeah, 2007, 17 and 2018, yeah. Yeah, so obviously you filmed seasons 10, 11, or was it 11 and 12, back to back? Is it- oh, now you're asking, now you're asking. I think it's 10, 10, I think it's 10 and 11. Yeah, so well, is there a reason, because I've seen nowhere that it's been cancelled. Is it is it cancelled? We haven't had official word. I mean, it, it, the stuff is still in storage, but... Uh, and the we see a very good at, at never really saying whether something's cancelled yeah. or not. They just don't make it again. So, I mean, I think, I think it's probably retired. Um, I, I gathered but, that. You know, <laughs> never say, but never say never. You know, like I, I said that back in two thousand and ten. I said, right, well, I mean, that's that's it. They've, they've decided to to not renew us. So that'll be it. And then seven years later, we came back. So you know. You never, you, you never know. I mean, it would be the, it would be the greatest single comeback of any, yeah, kids' television show ever to have, to have been renewed twice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, two thousand and seventeen. Yes, we, yeah. we, it was filmed back to back. But my, my, I mean, I, I actually was only involved in 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 that for uh, about a week. Oh um, really? Yeah, yeah. Because they were they, my bits were, were filmed. Uh, either on my own or with uh, Aisha, um, who was playing um, the new Raven. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, as it always happens in, in kind of TV and film, they, they, they kind of try and bunch that kind of bit together. Right. So Aisha and I just spent about, oh God, it wasn't even a week, it was about three or four days, actually, just really? wandering, wow. around, wandering around the woods and just doing loads and loads of scenes together. And then, and then when we weren't doing, if if um, she would then like take take some time off in the afternoon, and they would just take me away, and I'd go off and, and film my little kind of monologue bits. Right. Uh, by okay. So I mean, my involvement in that was only, yeah, it was only about three or four days. I wasn't um, I wasn't involved with the with the young warriors at all, and and with the, their kind of gameplay because I was, you know, story wise, I was supposed to be stuck in another world in another oh, dimension. Yeah, so, of course. Um, so so yeah but i mean having coming back and and putting that costume on after seven years was was pretty surreal um yeah i can imagine yeah i mean when i first saw it get announced that it was coming back i was obviously i was obviously a lot older than i originally was when i watched the original show but yeah yeah. i love raven and obviously seeing you obviously return makes it that much better because you've got that nostalgia aspect yeah i think so i mean i remember at the time I mean, there was a lot of toing and throwing between the BBC and myself about how it was going to happen and, and and what my involvement would or wouldn't be, and um, and then when I it was kind of finally announced and and I was like, you know, Raven's coming back, and and so am I. It went absolutely bonkers, like oh really? Yeah, and like, I put it out on on Twitter, and and it had like ten thousand oh, wow. retweets and like twenty thousand likes or something. It went, it was, it was kind of. Yeah, just just crazy because, you know, people like yourself had reached a had reached a kind of age, and they were kind of the, it was suddenly nostalgia, and they were looking yeah. back at their childhood and kind of and wanting to kind of rewatch and and I suppose reappreciate Raven from, from with 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 more mature or adult eyes, you know, and so yeah, yeah people were 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 so excited and so up for it, and I think. I think it worked for the most part. I mean, there were there were elements of it that that probably didn't. Um, uh, I mean, the main one being that pff, 
you didn't have as much of me in it as you should have done, obviously. Yeah, well, you made the show, so that was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. But um, no, I think it, I think it was pretty. I think it was pretty. It, it wasn't too far off the mark. Um, no, exactly. yeah, it was just amazing. It was just amazing to be, to be doing it again. Like I say, to, after seven years to, to have been brought back, it's it's kind of almost unheard of, you know. So, um, and the and the love and the excitement out there for it was 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 brilliant. It was just yeah, it was great. Yeah. And, and I was just bottom line, I was just pleased that the costume still fitted. You know, I mean, leather trousers, leather trousers are not forgiving. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was still able to get them on, so I was I was pretty happy. You've, you've clearly kept in shape then all these years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, like that. So what is it like being known as a CBBC icon? You know, because obviously we all watched you as a, in, as a childhood uh, personnel. So what is it like growing up through all that from 2002 uh, up to 2021? Well, it's kind of funny. Like I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking, my goodness, it's next year it'll be 20 years since I've been involved in children's television and I was like that can't be possible because <laughs> I started only started filming Raven like last week you know, like, yeah. like, I thought, how, how did how did that happen how did where did the, the 20 years go that that, that that can't be right because I'm still only 20 oh oh wow um so yeah it's do you know what it's amazing like so lucky and so fortunate and so so humble really I mean, it's it's to have to have got that gig not long out, well, come straight out of drama school, to to it then. I mean, obviously, I didn't, I, no one knew at the time, but for it then to go on with with kind of you know uh, nine series and spin-off series and BAFTAs and going to India and all this kind of stuff. To to think that that you went to India was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, we filmed them. Um, Raven the Secret Temple was filmed in was filmed in India. Oh, wow. And so to, to have, so yeah, I spent like um, 10 weeks in, in India. It was amazing. So, so yeah, I mean, if if you told me that in 2002, when I'd just come out of drama school and I was in the middle of the Scottish Highlands in a wood somewhere, on my first day of filming, and you said I had all that ahead of me, I'd be like, nah, wait, nonsense. What? <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's a total privilege, and to to have, to have been part of people's childhoods, and to have had the effect that Raven has had on yeah. them. I mean, not 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 me. I'm not not making it about me. I mean, but the program, like it, it, it it's it has it's gained this kind of cult status, and to have had that effect on on so many young people, and so many young people have said, oh, it's it, you know the the the. the you know, this kind of element in Raven gave me the courage to do this, or it gave me the the self belief and for me to go on and do this in my life and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's really really cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's um it's a it's an honour really. And but yeah, to be to have been part of children's television for twenty years, that's just mental. <laughs> that is crazy. Two decades. Oh. Yeah. Um. So, were you obviously? I know you said you're only in the final two seasons for as you said, a few, a few days. Was mm. you annoyed that way the Warrior didn't return? Uh, I mean, personally, yes. I mean, I, I think uh, I, I think the show, if I'm honest, I think the show missed it. Yeah. Um, and I think I think all those people that watched the new show who had grown up with Raven really missed Way of the Warrior. But listen, uh, bottom line is it was down, it was an entirely budgetary decision. Ah, uh, right. Um, where the war, where the warrior was dismantled, and um, well, I think most of it was most of it was destroyed in a uh, a couple of years after we'd filmed the last series. Oh, really? Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I think, but just these kind of things, that kind of size of 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 kit and bulk of equipment and stuff and set would cost it costs a lot of money to store. So. So I think the idea was if it ever came back again, they would just build it. They would build another one. But then when it came to building another one, they were like, oh, wow, inflation, times have changed, ah. things have moved on, and um, this is going to cost an absolute arm and a leg. So we can't. <laughs> so, oh, so the, the were talks was in. of in, including it. Pardon me? So there was talks of putting away the warrior in the show again. 
Yes, I think that there was definitely talk of it, but it was just, it, I think it just literally came down to... Right. Just down to money. And it, always, it always does in telly. It always does. Always does. Um, so on the topic of sort of way the warrior and other challenges, was there many accidents per se? No, do you know what? Um, touch wood, we, um, we were really lucky. We never, I think I can hand on heart say we never had any accidents. Um, or if we did, I mean, it was like, you know, a bumped knee or a bruised yeah. elbow, you know, we didn't, no one lost any limbs. And I don't think, I don't think there was ever any, any blood spilled. Um, no, I mean, we, we had some, everything was properly safety tested and we have, we had them, um, you know, proper safety personnel with us at all times and first aiders and everything was, was, was done um, to, to the letter. So That's good. No, we were really, really lucky. And, you know, also things like, you know, the swinging blades and axes and spiky barrels weren't actually made of real steel. Of so, um, you know, we weren't running the risk of chopping a child's head off. So, you know, yes, it was, yeah, we were lucky. So how did the show go about recruiting different kids for series? Is, is it a simple, they go through different agencies and stuff? No, no, no. So, so I would say 95% plus of the of the young warriors that were uh, involved in Raven of the Years were not from an acting background. Like oh, okay. it, the, BBC, the BBC didn't go and search youth theatres or anything like that. It was um, it was literally done um, in the way they used to do it in the BBC. Is where you'd go on, the, you'd click on the CBBC website and and find up in the top corner somewhere there'd be like up here there'd be like be on a show, and you'd click on that and then you'd get a whole list down the side of the page that would give you different shows you know like um prank patrol or raven yeah. or crazy beaker or whatever you know and ah. you click on that and then you then you you could get an odd uh, uh an application form you'd fill it in send it off and then uh take it from there and then if you were asked to audition you would go along to there was usually auditions in kind of glasgow manchester liverpool birmingham cardiff london uh belfast that kind yeah. of so they covered covered the, the whole of the UK, and then, so they would do those, and then they would, in those auditions, the the, the 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 youngsters were given individual challenges. They were given group challenges, and so the idea was to see how how they fared uh, individually, how they felt, uh, how they fared as part of a team, and you know they would maybe be interviewed a little bit on camera just to see how they came across. But right. it wasn't about the kind of their. Um, camera ability or, or or their acting ability it was always down to to what kind of a contestant they would be and so yeah. if you got through that that was then whittled down and uh there would be uh so we would take on 18 warriors per series and i think what would happen was they, they would take the they would whittle it down to about 30 kids and then they would then take them off for a weekend to an outdoor education center Oh, okay. And get them climbing trees, gorge walking, swimming through locks, you know, all that kind of all yeah, that kind similar of stuff. stuff that, yeah, that's vaguely, ah, there's kind of vaguely raven esque, and then that's how they would, that's how they would uh, whittle them down to the eighteen. Wow, that's interesting. I just thought it'd be the acting agency, but that's I think a lot a smarter way. I think, as you said, it's similar stuff. So yeah, 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 yeah. and it, and it's, I think, like I say, that the, the important thing was not that the, that the kids would necessarily come across well on camera it was about um what kind of a, a a warrior they might be in terms of their aptitude for 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 challenges really yeah uh, i remember in a few of the episodes can't remember exactly but a couple of kids were obviously scared of heights so was that never touched on before or were they just put forward for those ones randomly oh no 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 they were they, they, i mean it was well well documented and, and it was um you know they, it was discussed with 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 parents and with with kids before they came on the show that there would be elements of 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 what they were going to do that would challenge them in some yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. And 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 the pair and it was cleared with the parents and if the parents were okay with that then that was fine and and so we would always say to them if it, when it came to a challenge like that look try it and if you don't want to then we'll 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 find another way or we'll figure out something else out and we'll find another way for it to happen or whatever. Yeah. But we would always try and see if they had 
the ability to conquer their fears. I mean, not not in a dangerous way. I don't, I, you know, but I mean, it was because everything was always safe. But it was yeah. important for them to 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 kind of to challenge that. I think you know, and and um, and the great thing was is that I think ninety ninety nine percent of them did it. You know, which was great. We, yeah, I was we did, say, yeah. Very rarely had. I think, I mean, I can only remember of maybe two or three out of the whole time where we had to maybe, like in the leap of faith, we maybe had to, to yeah. kind of to coax them down or, so, yeah. Uh, and I, this might not be your department, but you remember in Way of the Warrior, how they teleport at the end? Mm. How does that work? Do they simply just go through a door and then you film it again from that side or? Uh, so what we would do is that um, they would... Uh, so if they got to the end of the way of the warrior, yep. the, the, the very end of the way of the warrior, in in reality was there was a big kind of hole at the end. There was a there was a there was a big circle that you had to to climb through. Yeah, big, a big wooden circle that was kind of clad around the outside, and it looked kind of like the end of the course in a kind of medieval way. And so that's where the, the warrior would climb through. And then in uh, so. In post production, the the editor and, and the team would then put the special effects around that. Right. So what they would do is they would, in during actual gameplay, if the warrior got to the end, the camera would see the warrior go through this hole and, and out the other side. And then, what we would do is we would once the game, actual proper gameplay was completed and we knew the actual outcome, we would then get the warrior to rerun that last little section. Uh, and then they, they would put up some green screen around ah, it right. so that they could then add in the, the special, um, you know, shimmering portal. Yeah, oh, all right, nice, them. cool. In the same way as, in the same way as if, if, a, if a warrior, you know, if I um, had to use my staff of power to, 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 to yeah, make so them, yeah. take, yeah. take us to take a feather off a standard or to, to reappear a warrior, we would do it two or three times so sometimes we we would do it once like if i was bringing back a warrior i would i would do it with an empty frame so i would zap and there wouldn't be a warrior there and then uh, i would freeze ah right then we would bring the warrior into frame and then i would go back a little bit and i would do it again so i'd be like and general i bring you back and then i would do it again but this time the warrior was there already, and so the, ah. the other was able to then could then get in with their scissors, so to speak, and yeah, yeah. chop around it. Oh yeah. wow, that's really interesting. Sometimes there, was, sometimes there was quite a bit of repetition, but what was amazing was <laughs> the 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 young warriors um, got got used to it so quickly. I mean, they were they were on it. They were like, "So is this a take? Is this a rehearsal? Is this a was oh, this a reveal shot? Is this a?" Do you know what I mean? They were they yeah. were so on it. They were great. Oh, that's really cool. And obviously, is Raven, obviously, I know it's a show, but is it fixed or is it, do they, kids just do the challenges and if they win, they win? If you get me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, it was never, it was never, uh, nothing was uh, pre, predestined or, pre, you know, pre, um, pre-planned. Oh, All right, no, so it, it, down, right. It was down to, you know, the, 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 the challenges were the challenges, and uh, if a warrior succeeded, they they got their gold rings or, or their feathers. If they lost, they they lost. There was nothing, there was nothing um, rigged about it in any way, shape, or form. So that so that by the end, when you did have your ult, your one remaining warrior, the ultimate warrior, they were they were truly the best of the best. Right. So there was never a challenge where, for example, all four warriors did a challenge like where the warrior, and they just all completed it, and you had to redo it. There was never no. times like that. Okay, right. No, no. I mean, because especially with the way of the warrior, because the way of the warrior was so difficult that you know, I think over the over the ten years or so, I think we only had about five or six that ever completed it. Is that so, it? Yeah, oh. it was. I mean, I'm, I can't remember the exact figures, but it's 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 a low. It's certainly a low number. Yeah, of course, because it's meant to be challenging, as you said. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, absolutely. It was it was the end of the, you know, it was an end of an episode, um, kind of ultimate challenge you know so yeah do you have a favorite um challenge of definitely way of the warrior um but i used to love um the leap of faith yeah the warrior yes. would jump out of the, the tree to to grab the golden rings um or uh i would i was always a fan of the deep loch just because it looked hellish 
Like it was just a whole bunch of kids jumping into a freezing cold loch and swimming. Oh, is it that cold? Swimming for the lives, <laughs> and I, I never envied them. So yeah, that was yeah. That, those those were three of my favourites. I think. Yeah. Did you ever feel sorry for watching the kids do all these challenges, and you're just stood there going, "Go on, jump in." <laughs> yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Especially oh, wow. ones, especially ones involving uh, any serious heights, because I'm I'm petrified of heights myself. So, oh yeah, really? I'm, a, I'm about to do in about ten days' time. I'm about to do a parachute jump and doing a skydive for uh, for charity, uh, and I am absolutely petrified i'm pooping my pants <laughs> um, but you know it's, i'm raising money for charity so i've got to do it but so whenever the kids were doing like the leap of faith or any of the high challenges i i, I just remember thinking i'm so glad it's not me and, you, think, and thinking how brave they were you know yeah of course did you ever get involved with any of these challenges off screen uh i i did uh, attempt the way of the warrior once. Oh, really? um, yeah, yeah 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 but uh I, I didn't complete it because, uh, well, let's just say the, the the demons who were operating it were not playing fair. That's all I'm oh. saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, they had well. it in for me. Uh, so obviously, the demons massively for me resemble, you know, the, like the Death Eaters from Harry Potter. They're very similar. So yeah. what are they like to be on set with? Well, they were great because I knew them all. Like, oh. Because they, they weren't... Back in the in the in the original series of Raven, they they weren't actors. They were um, they were some of our production crew. They were some of the carpenters and special oh. effects guys. Like they were, they were. Um, oh, the, the demons were basically anyone we could find <laughs> to, uh, to put on a to put on a demon costume. And um, you know the you know you could never see their faces because it was it was blacked out. But that was just a. That was just a, a, a midge net, a mosquito net. Oh, is that right? And then, and then the demon cloak over the top, and it would obscure the face. But um, yeah, it was it was mainly our, our art and design team who built all the challenges. So they built the way of the warrior. They built the leap of faith. They built everything, everything, any sets, anything. So whatever, whatever, whatever location we were at, there was always this massive tent off camera that was just full of tools and wood and hessian and gold spray paint and oh, wow. and they would just and and foam and and stuff and and they 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 made everything and so it was generally them that operated the machines and were the demons because they knew exactly how it worked you know uh, um, right yeah. and then sometimes it was our it was like a, a production runner or um yeah so but you're not allowed to do that nowadays so oh, wow. when it came to when it came to series 10 and 11 the most recent series of raven they had to employ um supporting art, supporting artists to do it because uh you yeah just for kind of i think bbc rules and regulations changed right you can't i think the idea being you can't be expecting people to do something for nothing Ah, I think right. I that. even though even though our, our you know the people that were back in the day that were operating stuff were were being paid as as designers and chippies and carpenters and whatever yeah of course but they weren't they weren't also getting a fee for for being a demon and you're on I screen think, now yeah yeah well, but i think of. in terms of in terms of kind of impartiality or, or or i think bbc rule employment rules or something anyway it changed, and so when they when it came to the two new series, they had to employ supporting artists. Yeah. Ah, fair enough. Um, so obviously, we spoke about uh, the returning shows. Um, mm -hmm. Was you ever given like an outline of where the season was going? Obviously, because we were working towards um, the ultimate uh, champions. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. So what do you mean in terms of, was I ever given a, an idea of where the show was going? What were the original series of Raven? No, the, the, two, the two new ones, like, did you know how it was supposed to end? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I knew what their plan was for the final, their, the final big challenge, which was all, oh, all right. set on, on kind of water, on this big assault course on water. Obviously, I didn't know which warriors would be partaking. 
of course um and i knew i knew in terms of the story of 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 what was going on between um raven of old and and raven and so uh, and and navar the baddie and stuff i knew that kind of what was supposed to was supposed to be happening there but other than that no because i, I you know no one knew what the outcome of 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 of, of, of what warrior would win what challenge so right so yeah yeah fair enough uh just uh we'll go, take a step away from raven for a sec obviously you're involved with um is it mac and uh, molly and mac molly, molly and mac, and mac so. and CDs, yeah you've just finished see, uh filming season three is it three and four yes we filmed season three and four back to back um we were obviously supposed to start it uh, in april 2020 but something else happened in, in 2020 yeah. um so it got postponed and postponed and postponed and obviously um rigid covid protocols had to be put into place uh, by the bbc so we eventually started filming um end of november beginning of december last year and we fell and we finished that in may so we filmed two series back to back and series three is not it's just finished on cbb's but i mean you can get it on iplayer um, all the time, yeah. and series four, I think, is planning to come out towards the tail end of of, of the year. I think, I think. Okay, yeah. so do you always film two seasons back to back for any show? No, not necessarily. No, I mean, when, when we first started Raven, it was just one series, and then, then, like I say, it was it was recommissioned, and we we did we did two, and then latterly, as time went on, I think I think the the they liked the idea of us filming two series back to back. It made it, it got them more bang for their buck, you know, because because everything was there and everything was in place and all the you know logistics and, and stuff was already there. They knew that if they, they if they spent a little bit more than the budget for one series, they could yeah. easily they could quite easily get a second series out of it. Oh, of um, course, yeah. And so that was with Raven and with with Molly and Mac, it was just down to the sheer demand and popularity. I mean, we'd, we'd filmed series one in 2018, we filmed series two in 2019. And then um, it just became huge. And so they wanted, the powers that be in the BBC wanted wanted more, wanted two series. And so that was their plan to film to film three and four back to back, and, and which we did, um, despite, um, the pandemic and and, and we, we we managed um, with very strict COVID protocols, yeah. but we we did it and it was it was um, yeah it was just it was just great to be working and, and was very very lucky very lucky to be working. Yeah, because it's been obviously a crazy time. Even in November, December, January time, it still was a bit hectic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it's still hectic now, isn't it? So <laughs> well, yeah, sort of. Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you see this as your new? Um, obviously, because Raven was your hit show, do you see this sort of as, as your new hit show? I suppose, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm again just so fortunate to to have been able to to have the opportunity to, to do something like this. I mean, I am, um, you know, when I when I was doing Raven over over all the years, I, I I wasn't a father then, and so now to have a to be doing a show that's on CBBS that my little boy can watch and and, and my wife and I recently had a a, a little girl and um, the idea that that when she grows up she'll be able to watch shows um, that I was I was in I mean that's that's something that's really really special yeah um, but yeah I mean I I've always been I was lucky to get Raven but I've always just been a jobbing actor so I you know I. I pre-pandemic of course but I, I i you know i did a lot of theater um and and bits and bobs of telly and, and voiceovers and radio and um anything really anything that that, that requires a self-employed actor for so yeah. um uh i've just been very fortunate that i was able to audition and, and, and get parts in two successful children's television shows it's just been it's been um that's been very fortunate but um yeah I, I, i'm i'm over the moon that molly and mac has become so successful and i suppose it's, yes i suppose it is my uh, my my current hit show <laughs> uh, yeah make it, sound like I've, make it sound like i've got a a huge back catalog of hit shows but um yeah <laughs> really stretch that far so you know yes yeah. no i'm good I, i'm 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 over the moon that that, that 
that it's so popular and and I really do hope that it it runs and runs for for a bit because there's so many possibilities and and lovely things to happen with with stories and with the plot and with characters and stuff like that and so yeah it's a great it's a, it's a lovely little show um it's fun it's funny it's charming it's got lovely catchy music it's great i mean as a parent i would want my kids to watch Molly and Mac That's if good. i if i wasn't in it do you know what i mean so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, long, uh, as far as I'm concerned, obviously I'm biased, but long may Molly and Matt continue. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope it continues. So, um, yeah. so just back to Raven. So, obviously, your iconic line is let the challenge begin. Did you create that or was that created by them? I would love to say that that was me. <laughs> it wasn't. No, it wasn't at all. No, no, that was definitely, definitely, um, uh, that came from either producer or director because i don't think oh i'm not 100 sure but i don't think i said just it claim it just movie. claim it <laughs> yeah yeah but i don't think i said it in the first series i don't think i don't think that was original I don't think so i might i might be wrong and someone will prove me either right or wrong someone will know in fact more than one person will know a lot of <laughs> a lot of hardcore raven fans will absolutely know yes. but um i've just got this distinct feeling that it's something that came along with the kind of revamp in 2000 uh, in, in series two um but no i was not responsible uh it would have been uh either my producer or director or possibly one of the writers so yeah okay That's fair enough not, not mine but i but i do uh, i do make sure that i claim it as as ravens when uh when other people try and use it yes <laughs> and either or of times on the raven set did you t did you keep any of the uh clothes the staff anything well um no because it's been under lock and key with the bbc for years and years and years i mean i had uh, over the years i've had various kind of golden rings i've taken those home oh, really? the, yeah the odd the odd skull or or feather or whatever um from a standard but in terms of the actual costume and the the, the staff of power uh no no I, I never did that was always taken away and put under lock and key um i did have before it was before raven was recommissioned with uh, with series 10 and 11 in, in 2017 uh i was working on a um a tv show a soap up here in scotland called river city okay um, it's our kind of um, bbc soap opera up here and uh where the studios are for river city um, the BBC also have uh, a big storage unit where they keep loads of costumes and props and sets from shows all over the shop. Yeah. And uh, I'd heard the vicious rumour that my Raven costume and stuff was being stored in there. So when I was filming River City, because I was, I was there for a while, I went on the hunt in one of my lunch breaks because I was like, right, it's beat. I mean, this was what, two, this must have been 2000. And well, it was a year my son was born, so 2015, 2016, something like that. And uh, I was like, God, it's been like five, six years since we've done Raven. It can't be coming back. Do you know what? I'm having that staff of power. That's going on my mantelpiece. That's it. That's, that's what's happening. So I went looking for it, and uh, it turns out it's been nicked. Someone nicked it years ago. Really? So someone somewhere has got, has got it in their house. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're not talking about it. It's not like the same thing as like, you know, James Bond's Aston Martin DB5, which was nicked in 1997 and is still missing and they can't find it. It's not quite on the same scale, you know, my oh, my oh. staff power being lost, but it has the same kind of special meaning to me, you know? Yeah, it's iconic and, to you. So, it's iconic to us. Yeah, it's iconic to me. So yeah. I, uh, no, I never got it. And that is why in series 10 and 11, uh, New Raven has a different staff. Oh, because they had to design a new one because it was wrong. Yeah, because they had to design a new one because the old one uh, was nicked and is in someone's house somewhere. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, did you nab that one? New one? No, 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 no. no. I think I, I think Aisha uh, might have tried to nab that. <laughs> or, they've still, or they've still got it under lock and key for, for her. I'm not sure, actually. I mean, I'm not going to go asking about Aisha's costume because that ain't never going to fit me. Um, but... Uh, yeah, my staff of power, who was affectionately known as Jake, um, he he is missing, missing. But I won't say presumed dead, just missing, missing in action. MIA. 
He's probably yeah. been used to firewood, probably. <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Do you know what? Navar is using it as kindling. That's what it is. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's what it is. Um, so, do you have any other interests outside of acting? Uh, what you mean, like kind of hobbies and 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 that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, hobbies uh, or anything else you like to pursue. Uh, well, yeah, I. Uh, well, I mean, being a dad, <laughs> yeah. that takes up a lot of my time, um, and being, I suppose, being quite fortunate in in the respect of being a self-employed actor, you're either um, working loads or you're not working loads. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so I get to have lots of family time, which is brilliant, and I get to so I get to spend a lot of of time with my kids more than than um a lot of dads i would say so that that takes up a lot of time and, and space for hobbies yeah but um i i, I do enjoy a bit of cycling road cycling and uh, and and running um but other than that it's children and uh, the gardening really <laughs> um i do like a bit of, bit of walking i've kind of i've realized that the older i've gotten and uh yeah, that I, I really enjoy spending time outdoors doing kind of physical things. And that was never me. Like at school for PE, I was last in cross country. I was never any good at football. I I just wasn't athletic. I just wasn't like I wasn't into exercise at all. I was like, yeah. why do I want to go and do that? It just it just makes me uncomfortable, sore and sweaty. I don't want to do any of that. Why would I want to do that? Of course. <laughs> I, think, I think it's only since I've gotten older, like um yeah, yeah. I mean, like two years ago, I uh, I I did a trek, a five day trek across the Sahara Desert. Oh, really? Char- yeah, and and that just kind of blew my blew my mind, and I I just loved it, and I did a bit of, quite a bit of training for that in terms of uh, kind of running and cycling and, and and hill walking and stuff like that, and I just I just realised that I just love being outdoors and and yeah. and kind of that. So yeah, I, I enjoy randomly my kind of. 13 14 15 year old self would would be looking at myself going, Who are you what are you talking about but yes uh that so th- those are i suppose i don't i don't think i've got an actual like hobby hobby like i don't i don't collect stamps or i don't do i kind of you know do you don't play football or no no i don't play football no I, like i say i've always had two left feet i'm absolutely appalling <laughs> i uh I can't, I can't. I mean, I've got loads of friends who like, you know, play five a side two or three yeah. times a week and uh, they they just know not to not to ask me because <laughs> it would be it would be terrible. It would be absolutely terrible. Yeah, I'm I'm rubbish. Rubbish. Fair enough. I used to play golf. I used to play golf. Uh but uh yeah, my, my children put pay to that. Um so maybe when they're a bit older I'll uh, play mini golf. I'll blow the yeah, I'll blow the gobwebs off my uh, my clubs and go out. Yes. Um, so you obviously seem to do some crazy things for these charities, like obviously Sahara Desert, skydiving. So what is this charity? <laughs> uh, well, two separate ones, really. The, the, the first charity that I that I did the Sahara Trek with is a, is a charity called CHAS, which is children's hospices across Scotland. And they, they, um, they give care and support to terminally ill children and their families. Um, so they got in touch a couple of years ago and asked me if I would um, be interested in, in helping to raise funds by um, getting sponsorship to do a trek across the Sahara. Um, so I was, yeah, well, it was just a kind of, it was a no brainer really, yeah, um, you know, to, to help raise money for, for such a, a worthwhile cause uh, and to have the amazing opportunity to, to go to Morocco and, 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 and trek and camp out in the Sahara Desert for five yes. days and nights. It was just like, yeah, I'm in. Where do I sign? Um, so I did that in 2019. We uh, I managed to raise about eleven and a half thousand pounds. So I was oh, wow. really, really pleased with that. And then three and a half, uh, not even two and a half, two and a half to three weeks ago, yeah. I got a phone call from a, an actor friend of mine who's in the who's in that Scottish soap opera um, that I was mentioning, uh, River City. Uh, and he he'd been asked to do this skydive, uh, and there was some spaces left. And so he phoned me and said, "Will you do it with me? Because I'm too scared." <laughs> and I said, "Well, I'll be just as scared." But yeah, <laughs> okay, I'll do it. And so this one is for a charity called Beatson, B 
Beats and Cancer Charity, and uh, they, um, well, they, it's ob- the name it's obvious by the name. They, um, yeah, they provide care and support to um, people with cancer and their families. So, so yeah, so that's oh, that's amazing what, what yeah. you've done. Obviously, so. well, yeah, I'm still <laughs> I'm still pooping my pants though. Like I, I'd I'd happily go and trek across the Sahara for six months rather than jump out of a plane. Like. I'd rather be, you know, dehydrated and in forty-five degree heat in the yes. sand, um, with with kind of, you know, rationed food. I'd rather do that for six months than spend. I mean, yeah. it's gonna be, I mean, the skydive is gonna be. It's gonna the whole thing is gonna take less than five minutes. Do you know what I mean? But it's I know you, 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 you're panicking for more months and stuff, and then it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. But you know. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Gravity, like once I'm through the door of that plane, gravity will do its job and the parachute will open and I'll have a lovely view and that'll be that. Exactly. And then I'll change my pants and we'll be fine. <laughs> um, so what work are you, are you working at anything at the moment? Uh, nothing specific at the moment, no. I mean, I do quite a bit of um, audio work, uh, voice work as well. Oh, nice. so, and we have a, we have a studio uh, at home here so um my, my wife's an actor as well so we we're able to to do voiceovers um and my wife does a lot of audio books and kind of um uh, voice work for cartoons and animations and things like that oh, so yeah we're able to we're able to to work from home which has been an absolute uh, lifesaver during uh, during covid um, yes. because uh, obviously our industry has has grown to a halt Really, I mean, apart from a little bit of television, which is kind of starting to come back now, but you know, theatre and and a lot of film and television has 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 um, it's, it's been very well. I mean, there's been no theatre whatsoever, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and and very very few film and television. So so audio work is 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 the only kind of stuff that's out there, and we've been been very lucky because pre pandemic it was something we did anyway. Um, we've we've managed to kind of keep it going. So. Awesome. Which is great. I'm glad that you've kept busy during this crazy time. Yeah, well, like I say, I mean, touch wood, we're we're very fortunate because yeah. you know we have friends who who have had to give up the business uh, and are you know are even struggling to to get uh, you know in inverted commas normal jobs. Um, so you know, it's 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 tough times for everybody out there. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. No matter what industry or department you're in exactly yeah so absolutely it's... absolutely yeah um just back to raven obviously you remember like the costumes that the the young warriors used to wear did you have any favorite colors or symbols uh, i always loved the sun uh which was a kind of orangey red one with obviously yes. the sun emblem on it uh and the tree just because yeah reds and greens they were always nice um and I think a lot of the time I liked the sun because we were filming in Scotland and we didn't always see it. And so it made me, it made me long for the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always loved it. I thought I just I loved the costumes for the for the young warriors. They were just really cool, you know. They 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 had that kind of medieval uh, element to them. You know, they looked yeah they looked the part. They looked great and and uh, but the kids were still able to do all the physical stuff that they needed to do, but. I know it wasn't their branded track suits or their or jeans or trainers, whatever, you know, that they might have worn on the days off or whatever. But I know they felt pretty cool in those. I think they they, they really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, yeah they like the Raven Power Rangers sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, but it was it was really weird when 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 you would meet the we'd meet the kids um, you know, offset. Like like once or twice we would all try and get the cast, get the kids and the crew and everybody together and we'd maybe go for a a big meal together or whatever or um or at the very end of the, the series we would have a rap party yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and then you'd see you'd suddenly see them out of their warrior costumes in their normal clothes with their normal hairdos and you'd be like i don't who are you i don't even reckon you know you, you'd hardly recognize them but yeah it's cool oh okay. well uh, i have one final question for you and that is what was your favorite moment from the series <laughs> i've i've told this story many a time and it's actually not from actual aired an aired episode but it okay. was it was in preparation for 
a, a, a challenge called the last stand which oh, was yeah. the kind of which was the penultimate challenge i think um before before yeah it was it was before way of the warrior it was basically when you were getting down to you were whittling down the final three warriors down to two and then obviously that two would then be down to one to, to make the ultimate warrior but this the, the last stand was three of them and they were they, the, the kids would start in these kind of cages and they would have to run this kind of assault course and Navar would be up in, on top of his tower shooting lightning bolts at them you know and and um, <clears throat> you know this was a big thing this was the three down to two and the kids were dead nervous dead nervous and so while we were about to start and I was chatting to one of the young warriors and he was dead nervous and he was like James I need to fart <laughs> and I was like right right okay okay um I tell you what we'll do. The cameras aren't rolling, right? So what we'll do is we'll cover it up. So after three, I'll cough really loudly, and you fart, right? Okay. He's like, right, okay, cool, man. He's like, Cause I, don't, I just don't, I don't want to be thinking about that while I'm having to do the last stand. You know, I want, I want to be focused. <laughs> I was right. Like, okay, okay, okay. Right, ready, ready, ready. Right. One, two, three. <sighs> and I made this big show of coughing, and he totally mistimed it. And so I finished coughing, then he went. <laughs> And uh, unbeknown to him and me at the time, the cameras and the sound were rolling and uh, we caught it, we got it on camera. And so at the end of the season, we had the rap party and that was, that was shown in the kind of the, 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 the blooper reel. And the boy was, to, to be fair, the young lad thought it was hilarious and he took it in really good spirits, you know, because I mean, bearing in mind, this, this kid was about 12, you know what I mean? So it was, yeah. it could have been, it could have been uh, the most embarrassing moment of his life, but he took it in good stead. And actually, you know, I reminded, I reminded him of it recently because he turned 30 <laughs> this year. He turned 30 <laughs> and one of, his, one of his pals got in touch and said, I don't know if you remember my mate, Let's just call him John Smith. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give his real name. And uh, he said, "I don't know if you remember my pal, but he was this warrior on this series of Raven." Um, just wondered if you might send him a little happy birthday video message. And so I did. Uh, I was in the middle of filming Molly and Mac, and I, I took a, a moment, yeah, of it and, and filmed it on my phone and sent it. And uh, you know, I did it in a kind of Raven type style. And then at the end, I, I just retold this story and uh apparently uh he he was showing this video uh in front of his friends and family and his girlfriend and all that kind of stuff and apparently he um he knew he knew as soon as i started talking he knew what was coming and uh, yeah he still remembers it obviously vividly to this day so oh wow but the fact that he just turned 30 did make me feel rather <laughs> rather old um, but yeah, he's he's and he's he's also quite successful in his field. He works in he works in sports. I'll, I'll oh, wow. make it I'll make it as vague as that. But, yeah. I mean, he's not he's not an ath he's not a he's not a professional athlete, but he's a professional in the field of sport and in in, in terms of helping uh, and coaching and um, looking after athletes. And I think so. He's quite he's quite high up. Oh wow! Uh, and um, but it, it doesn't matter, you know. He's still, he's still the warrior that farted because he was so nervous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's you know, a great that, story. <laughs> I mean, but off in terms of the actual show, any of my, my favorite moments would, would be whenever any of the, the, the kids completed the, the Way of the Warrior because it was designed to be the toughest, toughest challenge yeah. that, that on, on Raven. So whenever anyone completed it, it was, you know, I mean, hats off to them. That was, that was a proper, proper um, achievement. Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember watching it and thinking, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, James, thank you very much for your time. Not at all. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Adam. It's been a pleasure. Ah, oh, yeah. Pleasure's all mine. I uh, hope you have, well, I say enjoy your evening. It's like 10 o'clock, so. <laughs> no problems. And listen, thanks for being so patient. I know we've we've had to put it off for, for a, a, a number of times and reasons, but it was either filming or then uh, babies or... Uh, and uh, yeah, just general kind of domestic carnage. But um, I appreciate it. So um, thanks, man. Uh, many Have thanks. Uh, take care. Help me catch you up down the line. All right, man. Take, take it easy. Back. You, you too, bye. Pal.